Good evening. We pray you all are well. We pray also that this service would be a great blessing and encouragement to each of us as we remember the sacrifice that our Lord made for us. Let me pray. Our great God and Heavenly Father, we ask that we might see the majesty of your love, your righteousness, your goodness and grace because of all those things that took place on this day when our Lord laid down his life on the cross for us. May we do the same because we are filled with his same spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they threw back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you're looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders 
that would be good if one man died for the people. The word of the Lord. John 18, 15 to 24. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them, they know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Nice and send him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The word of the Lord.
John 18, verses 25 through 32. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil we would have not delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. The word of the Lord. Going to die.
And Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, we ought to, he ought to die because he has made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he, went even, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus, Jesus answered to him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it has been given for giving you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought out Jesus and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement in Amorak, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, behold your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Our scripture lesson comes from John 19, 17 to 30. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest and the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate says, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scriptures which say, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that his time was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. 
a jar of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge filled with sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Thus far the reading of God's holy word. The passage that we just have read is the central passage in all of Scripture. The truth of what happened on Good Friday was prophesied from the early chapters of Genesis and is looked back on in the last book of Revelation. Here on that cross, Jesus bore our sins and our sorrows. He became the sacrifice that atoned for our sins before God. We saw this in Genesis chapter 3, where God promised that he would send the seed whose heel would be bruised, but that he would crush the head of the serpent. We see it promised again in the life of Abraham when he took his son Isaac up to the mountain to be sacrificed. And just before Abraham brought down that knife into Isaac's body, God said, look, behold, a lamb. That sacrifice was again seen portrayed in the Passover where a lamb that was sacrificed, its blood was spread on the lintels of the doorpost so that the angel of death would pass over it. It's celebrated every year. In fact, this past Wednesday was Passover and it, they commemorate that Lamb of God who delivered them from bondage. We see it again throughout the Old Testament in the priestly functions of offering sacrifices, in the sacrifice of the scapegoat where the sins of the people were laid on the hands of the goat and one goat was sacrificed while the other was sent off. We hear it again in the prophets in Isaiah chapter 53 where he speaks about someone who was a lamb that was led to the slaughter, who bore our iniquities. And when God saw the anguish of his soul, it was satisfied. Our text says the last words of Jesus were, it is finished. A better translation would be paid in full. What was paid in full? The price that we owed God for the debt we could not pay. John the Baptist foretold this when he saw Jesus coming to him. He said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Paul wrote of it when he said, our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. And John in Revelations, what does he see standing there in the center of heaven? One who was slain, the lamb who was slain. You see, the central message of the Bible points to this day we call Good Friday. Oh, it's good for us, but it was a horrible day for our Lord. It was on that day that he bore our sin. He bore the wrath of God on our behalf. The earth quaked, the sky darkened, as Jesus did what was unthinkable, bore the sin of the world. And that's what makes Good Friday good. Because our debt, if we place our faith in Christ, has been paid. When we trust in Him, that debt is no longer on our account or on our head, but it has been paid in full by Jesus. When Jesus said, it is finished, it wasn't just his giving up his spirit that was finished. It was the payment that was required for all our sins. And so today, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you've placed your trust in him, there is no sin that is laid to your account. It's all been placed on Jesus. And God has promised that he'll remember that sin no more. He has separated it from us as far as the east is 
from the West. For this, let us give thanks. Let's pray. Our great God and Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and we think about that terrible, awesome day on which Christ bore our sins, we come humbly before you and confess our own. We confess that we have not done what you've asked us to do. We've intentionally broken and violated your law. We have presumed too much on the work of Christ or not enough. We pray that we would rest and trust in him in such a way that he would live in us so that we would hate our sin and turn from it and love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. And Father, as we come to you this Good Friday, we pray for our nation, for our state, for our city, and for this world. You know the struggle and pestilence that we are under. Would you forgive us and heal our nation and heal this world? Would you renew us and revive us and restore us? For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. Another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of the Lord, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus, 
bounded in linen cloth with its spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Death is crushed to death. 